Welcome back. The Royal Race Row has been reignited by the claims in Omid Scobie's book. My decision to announce the names behind the claims has made headlines around the world, from India to New Zealand and the United States, where, of course, Harry and Meghan reside. The British royal family is a global brand, which is precisely why Meghan's original claims were so damaging. Now we know much more about the allegations. Does anyone really still believe them? Well, joining me to discuss this, our Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker, and political journalist Ava Santina, and from New York, the Talk TV presenter Trisha Goddard. All right, Esther, we just had a rather animated debate mm. about all this, yes. uh, which I thought was a little unnecessarily uh, over the top. Um, what's your view about all this? I, I think the people's, in, uh, well, desire to believe whether the royal family are racist or not stems from what they originally feel about the royal family to begin with. If you think the royal family is an antiquated institution that's, you know, rooted in white supremacy, of course you're happy to believe that, you know, the racism allegations were true. If you're a staunch monarchist, you're like, they can never do any wrong. And for the rest of us, we're thinking, OK, what's the evidence? Because at the end of the day, the monarch is still our head of state, mm. and it, it's important that they're obviously not bigoted individuals. And that's where I... That's the camp that I fall in. At the end of the day, I don't see any evidence of racism. I've said this before. I, 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 I'm from a Ghanaian family. If I was having a child with someone who wasn't of my race, mm. my, my family would have conversations about what the child would look like in a jovial way. Of course. And I think there was an element of bad faith. Of course. So if it, was, if it was that, there's nothing wrong with that anyway. Ava. But we don't know that. We don't, no. Come on. Like, come on. No, I'm, if I'm serious. A, if there's been a conversation behind doors about, you know, the child's skin colour, obviously. Okay, that answer has me got this. Answer me this. It, hasn't it? Megan's mother was in an interracial relationship, which is Megan, which is Megan is the product of. Megan's family would have undoubtedly had conversations. Oh, what's Megan going to look like? I wonder what she's going to look like since your husband is white. Would that have made her family racist? Do you think that's no, a very answer, good question? Answer that. Would okay. that have made Megan's family racist? I can answer it with this point that do you not think that's that that is though. skewed? That is skewed by your now with the British monarchy and they are they no, are assessing it's not. whether they're, they're that child is human being. too dark to because, be in the royal human, family. Well, you, don't you don't believe that. Sure. You don't believe that was the way that conversation went. Because I wasn't there. But you believe none of us were there. Does any of it make sense that Charles and Kate? of all people, right, people who've dedicated their public life to actually being completely inclusive, never said a racist word in their lives, that suddenly they're going to be saying, I hope it's not too brown, this but hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me nonsense. answer that. Let me answer that. I'm going to be extremely careful with what I say because of libel law, but I do think that there is some racism in the royal family, not necessarily... That's, no, that's, listen, that's hang on. fine. I'm not going to put that on any individual, but, yes, I could imagine a that's, world that's where there are... are, there are all right, let me bring in Tricia, who's been waiting patiently. Tricia, look, let's try and have a you know, sensible conversation about this. You know, I've just watched the Sussexes backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. It's gone from racism, and we heard it from their own mouths on Oprah, to unconscious bias. No one's produced a shred of actual evidence here. You know, I'm sorry, I'm calling, I'm calling, it's nonsense. You know, Piers, I had a really interesting conversation with my kids who are biracial. And they have people in their family, extended family, mm. who have um, used words or little phrases that anybody else would just think, oh, doesn't matter. But because of their personal experiences, they've had to sit down with those people and say, you know, this term is not acceptable. I know you think it's a joke. I know you think we should light lighten up. But within our family, it, it hurts. It's painful because of our experience. Now... If I can say that, there's somebody out, you know, people in our family have had those conversations, and yes, they're hurtful. We're, if somebody comes along after the fact, two years down the track, and makes it all public and it blows it up, it becomes even more painful. And people, you, when you talk about backtracking, can I rephrase that? Sometimes we can learn. I've watched you grow, if I can put it that way. We're never too old to learn. <laughs> I've seen you learn, as I have, with lots of different things around Israel, Gaza. We learn, we learn, we learn. What if, let me just put this to you, what if, since they initially came out with what an American sees as racism, and I do think there are cultural differences, yes, just because we're all brown doesn't mean to say we all think the same, but what if, from there, they've learned, and it, it's not so much as backpedalling, because I'm just thinking of family members within ours, it's like, oh, OK, yeah, I shouldn't have said that, or uh, maybe they weren't being... They didn't mean to be racist, but they didn't even realise... So used to being casual about it, they didn't realise it would hurt us. 
But I have to say about Omid Scobie, he is like the uncle who turns up two years after the fact at a Christmas party and shows off the, the, the messages you, that you texted them two years ago when you were drunk. Mm. I mean, when I heard this book was coming out, can I say this? Are we uncensored? Yes. Shall I be honest what yes. I really thought? Yes. I thought, what the f***? I'm sorry, sorry. I was like, oh, for Christ. I'd like to apologise to any viewers offended, but we are uncensored. And I'm you know what? Sorry. That's exactly what I thought, too. I just, I just hadn't said it yet. <laughs> it's like the horse has bolted. Yeah. It's at the knackered yard. It's glue. And we, I mean, I don't believe anything was done with malintent. I think there was a lot of misunderstanding. I do think there are terms and questions, and it depends where you're brought up. But if there are questions and people are talking about what a baby's colour are, for one family, it may be done in a light-hearted way. In another family, if there's already friction, it might be okay, the, look, the before final we go to the... twist of the knife. All right, we before we go know. to the break, I want to play a clip of Prince Harry on the Stephen Colbert show. The ginger gene is a strong one. Look at that. <laughs> Both of them. The, spen Both the, of them the, spen are the Spencer gene is very, very strong. I actually really genuinely thought at the beginning of my relationship that should this go the distance uh, and then we have kids, that there's no way the ginger gene will stand up to my wife's genes, but I was wrong. Wow, isn't he speculating about the skin colour of his baby? Wow. Uh, let's take a break. Oh, we'll come yeah. back and debate that after the break.